Okay, hi everyone. So let us do the explanations of uh, neat revision series, fifth in this series. So first question is which of the following arteries can be damaged during squint surgery? This is not a squint surgery question. This is the ophthalmological anatomical question. Anterior ciliary arteries are also known as muscular arteries. In squint surgery, you manipulate the muscles and you have to prevent damage to the muscular arteries that is nothing but the anterior ciliary arteries which are 7 in number, 2 for each rectus except lateral rectus. A very another method and, and very uh, smart method was told by another student yesterday that during squint surgery, we should manipulate the extraocular muscles which are in the anterior part of the eyeball. While central retinal, posterior ciliary, ophthalmic are in the posterior part of the eyeball. So by logical also the answer has to be anterior ciliary arteries which is present in the anterior part of the eyeball. Now all of the following can raise the intraocular pressure except. Now whenever more fluid is going towards the head, more secretion will be there from ciliary body into the posterior chamber means more aqueous will be there and more aqueous production means more intraocular pressure will rise. So when you are sitting or in supine and in prone, prone will have more pressure than supine than sitting. Now even if you know nothing about this drinking large amount of water that is a process known as osmosis. Physiology, movement of water from low solute to high solute. So if you drink large amount of water, there is low solute in the blood vessels and IE in comparison has high solutes. So water will move inside the IE, pressure will increase again due to increased secretion due to osmosis. Reverse is there for mannitol. If you give mannitol the fastest reduction of IOP, the intraocular pressure is very high, means the solutes are less. You put mannitol or even glycerin oral glycerin intravenous mannitol to increase the solutes in the intravascular space. So water will come out of the eye and water coming out of the eye means the pressure will decrease. Well salva, if you do well salva, intrathoracic pressure increase which will raise the intra or vital pressure that will cause resistance of the aqueous to go out because of increase in the episcleral venous pressure that will also increase the pressure. But even if you don't nothing about all these, you should know a new drug that is rho kinase inhibitor is the anti-glaucoma drug that is natasodil which is decreasing the intraocular pressure and that is the answer of this question. Now this is a slit lamp picture, a diffuse slit lamp picture. The blue is coming from cobalt blue filter and always when cobalt blue filter is used, fluorescein orange color dye is used. Which has a property of fluorescence means blue light is coming inside and green light is reflected outside. So this is a dendritic ulcer in the epithelium of the cornea in herpes simplex uh, epithelium dendritic ulcer. Management of this is topical antiviral that is acyclovir 5 times a day. Topical cyclopelagics are given in any infectious keratitis to decrease pain, decrease ciliary body spasm. Topical lubricants can be given for symptomatic. But this is a viral, no role of antifungal over here in this question. Now which of the following is used for clinical evaluation of the patient with HLA B27 anterior? In anterior reviators, you only have to see the anterior segment. A is direct ophthalmoscope, B is fundoscope, indirect ophthalmoscope, C is slit lamp and D is slit lamp plus lenses but this is not touching the cornea that is slit lamp plus lenses. It's a gold standard to see the optic disc and macula. Anterior one third of the vitreous till anterior one third of vitreous can be seen with the help of slit lamp. That is the answer of this question. Direct ophthalmoscopy is also for optic disc and macular evaluation. Macular means central retina, you know. And for entire retina evaluation, indirect ophthalmoscopy is done. So anterior vitreous slit lamp will be the best. Now another student uh, asked a very important question. So why can't this be a indirect gonioscopy now and lenses are not asked in pg exam you cannot see this lens is a indirect gonioscope or it is a condensing lens of uh, slit lamp with lenses but you sh can see here it is a non contact procedure gonioscopy is a contact procedure that's why there is not a gonioscopy being done it is slit lamp plus lenses 
that is the answer over here but c is the answer because only the enter segment has to be seen that is seen with the help of straight lamp now pursuits are slow movements slow smooth movements and fast rapid are saccades slow fast slow fast will generate a nystagmus in a patient it is a physiological nystagmus can be induced by optokinetic nystagmus drum that is the answer over here which can be used for vision testing in a child less than 1 year it can also be used for detection of malingering agar aapko lag raha hai ki patient jhoot bol raha hai uske jhoot bolte hi drum ghuma do wo jhoot bole aap drum ghumao if the if he has nystagmus it means he must be seeing the stripes on the drum it is a objective test now brooks membrane can be considered as the first layer of choroid that is Uh, between the retinal pigment epithelium the last layer of the retina and the choreo capillaries now cracks can be seen in two conditions in brooks membrane one is lacquer cracks that is seen in axial myopia high myopia second angioid streak or dystrophy means cracks of the brooks membrane since birth so both are related to brooks membrane but it does not form the inner barrier it forms a outer blood retinal barrier which will prevent the choroidal fluid and blood to come to the retina inner barrier is formed by the vascular endothelium of the central vessels which will prevent the central retinal fluid to come inside the inner six layers and drusens in age related macular degeneration are deposited in the brooks membrane in the sub rp layer that is brooks membrane that is also true so c is a answer over here now all of the following are visual field this is a in, this is a patient view patient view means you are patient like i am patient i am telling the visual field to the doctor that this is my right visual field i can't see anything and this is the left i can see only i cannot see from one quadrant this is this is incongruous this is seen in right anterior chiasma syndrome this is left homonymous superior quadrantinopia pi on the pi in the sky not eye pi in the sky seen in right temporal lobe This is left homonymous hemianopia, but incongruous. Can be seen in right optic tract. Optic tract, optic chiasma can be congruous, can be incongruous. Incongruous means asymmetrical. And this is bi-temporal inferior quadrant involvement that heteronymous. That can be a first defect in craniopharyngeal because the tumor is coming from above. So superior fibers of chiasma are involved. So inferior temporal defects are there, which will become bi-temporal later on. So, which of the following has a lesion anterior most? Now, when there is an anterior junction between the optic nerve and chiasma is affecting, which will on the right side, for example. So, right side total fibers are lost. So, right side total scotoma. Sometimes there can be central scotoma also when the lesion is small. But there is a fibers known as genio villi brand that is inferior nasal fibers which cross and make a loop on the other side. So, if that genio is involved in the junction. the other side suprotemporal defect will be there this is an example of incongruous in optic chiasma known as anterior chiasma syndrome anterior junction syndrome junctional scotoma it is in the anterior chiasma that is anterior most lesion in this question and the answer of this question now in which nerve palsy the patient will have diplopia on going down stairs in paralytic squint the diplopia increases in the direction of paralyzed muscle so if you remember from the class i told you the practical application of the cross which are the muscles which are uh, present uh, below means which are causing uh, depression that is so and io so out of these third nerve palsy is down and out already the i is down patient cannot have diplopia diplopia is everywhere in third nerve palsy for example in right third nerve palsy the right eye is down and out so in dextro de dextro depression there is no diplopia because already the eye is down and out in left third nerve palsy no diplopia on levo depression fifth nerve palsy will not cause any um, paralyt in uh, in the eyes because third nerve third four six nerve are supplying the extraocular muscles fifth nerve will not cause any paralytic squint sixth nerve palsy will have esotropia so that will not have vertical diplopia it will have horizontal diplopia like right six nerve palsy will have right esotropia the patient will have diplopia maximum on looking right and he will come with right face turn also so answer is fourth fourth nerve supplies so so is present below in the cross that is a depressor 
so vertical diplopia is maximum going in downstairs going downstairs means going when the patient looks down when you go downstairs ab aise jata ke upar aankar ke aise jata hai nahi na you look down and go down so that's the question patient will have diplopia maximum on looking down in so palsy that is fourth no palsy all right so this is the left retina showing some yellow 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 deposits in the central retina there is no hemorrhages here only the confusion should be between hard exudates and drusens but look at the age of the patient 8 year old patient present with gradual painless vision decrease only in the center with a yellow some deposits in the central retina there might be metamorphosis or distorted vision but i have not given that still the answer is age related macular degeneration and dry type because only drusens are there over here these are not hard exudates if there are hard exudates they must be along with some hemorrhages also may not be uh, along with hemorrhages also but here mostly the answer is uh, armd because age is also going in favor of age related macular degeneration and hard exudates are small shiny sometimes they go in outer plexiform layer in the radial configuration but everywhere in the retina it can happen but here drusens are there only in the central retina that's why the answer answer over here is age related macular degeneration answer is management is oral antioxidants are given over here no not related really. desmans membrane is one of the layers of the cornea vogt stria v for vertical v for vogt h for horizontal h for hab stria are breaks of the brooks uh, breaks of the desmans membrane habs in congenital glaucoma vogt in keratoconus caches flesh's ring everyone should know is deposition of copper in the desmans membrane can be seen in wilsons can be seen in cirrhosis can be seen in many condition like child causes intraocular copper penetrating trauma even if you don't know anything about acute hydrop you should know theoretical question a flesher's ring is f for fe f for iron deposition picture won't be asked of flesher's ring cases flesher definitely picture is going to be asked a brown ring in the periphery flesher's is a iron deposition in the epithelium of the cornea coming from tear film in keratoconus patient from tear film it comes picture won't be asked but theoretically you should know this is not related to desmen is related to epithelium of the cornea acute hydrops is in keratoconus when there is a increased bulging of the cornea the desmen membrane ruptures the fluid the aqueous can imbibe into the cornea leading to hydrops hydrops in water so that's the only condition in keratoconus where the patient can have pain edema in the cornea that is acute hydrops so here the answer is not related to desmen's is pressure strain that's the 10 questions see you in mini tnd tomorrow